One of the best ways to become more familiar with economics is to read good books, but it can be really hard to find the books that you're interested in. So I want to go through some of the books that this year have made me a better economist. Books that will get you interested in economics, if you're already interested in economics, can take you farther along in economics, and then I'll even just throw in some books that I had fun with this year. But speaking of fun, I thought it would be interesting to give away some of these books in a fun and different way. I'm going to be playing Jenga throughout this entire review. For every row that I complete, I will give away one of these books. But every time the tower collapses, I will give away the full set. And this is a beefy stack of books. Every time this tower falls, I'm going to lose over $100. Let's see how much damage Jenga is going to do. The first book that made me a better economist this year was mine. Now, I did a whole video doing a review on this, explaining why I love this so much. It really was my favorite economics book this year and probably one of my favorite economics books that I've read in many years. It's just hard to find a book that so fundamentally changes the way that you look at the world. The focus of this book is on property rights and how the different ways we define property can shape and engineer our lives. I teach these principles to my classes now. Every Every class I recommend this book to because when we go through this discussion, it can just really play with their minds. I've had people come back after a weekend when we discuss this and they just start questioning whether they own anything or why they own anything. That's the kind of book that gets you excited to share with other people. If you want more information on this book, I will link to the full review at the end of this video. The second book that made me a better economist this year is The Wizard and the Prophet. This is a few years old and I should have gotten to this much sooner, but the stories here on Norman Borlaug are worth the book alone. This again is another paradigm shifting book, especially with so many changes that have happened in the last year. When we look at COVID or we look at NFTs, I've seen a lot of people with very pessimistic takes on what the future looks like. And this is a book that says, hey, people People have had pessimistic takes on the world for all of history and there are some people who have the optimistic takes and they go ahead and make some amazing things. Now we have to take the pessimism with some seriousness, right? We can't just totally disregard it, but I loved the story of optimism in this book. I mean, this, and like I said, the Norman Borlaug story alone is worth this book. It is hard not to fall in love with Norman Borlaug when you see that he is so committed to improving the food supply that he, even though he has zero resources, he straps a plow to his back and plows his own field. And it's just, it's, ah, man, I love this book so much. I love the stories in it. I think you're going to love it too. And it'll help you as an economist, just be more optimistic about what economics and constraints and all these different influences have on making sure that we can get what we need. Now let's go ahead and move into some books that will take you from your intro understanding of economics to a more advanced understanding. The first one is Causal Inference, The Mixtape. This is a new book on econometrics. And if you're not familiar with econometrics, it is a combination of economics and statistics. It's how we are able to determine causal effects. And this is such a good book that takes you through from the beginning of like the basics that you need all the way through some of the most recent research on using econometrics. Now it's definitely a more advanced book. I took this class when I was in my second or third year of an economics college education. It, it's not something that you just dive into right away. And I'll be honest, it's not even a book that I have read cover to cover, but being able to have this book available to go through those things that I might need clarification on when I'm working on a project or I want to understand something a little bit better. It's something I definitely wish I had when I was an undergraduate. Along those same lines, this year I wanted to get a little bit better at doing economic theory and models. I don't want to be totally submerged in it, but I do think it helps understand models a little bit better when I'm doing my research or where I'm trying to explain these principles here on video. So another book that I've been going through this year is Chicago Price Theory. This is, I think it's supposed to be like a graduate level text, but it goes through a lot of what I would consider intermediate economic models, making sure you understand elasticities and Marshallian demand and Hicksian demand, a lot of like really basic principles, but when you understand them and you can really just embody them and 
habitually think about them, it helps you see the world a little bit differently. Now, I might have had a better experience reading this because it matched the kind of education I got, and so a lot of this was reminding me of those principles, but I think you'll get a good experience out of it too. And if you're having a hard time, the nice thing is they have a whole YouTube channel dedicated to Chicago price theory where they walk through what's in this book. It's nothing like market power, but if you're interested in trying to get a little bit more formal training in economic theory, I recommend this book. So far, I am making it through this just barely, but let's see if Jenga treats me well for the rest of this video. In the meantime, let me give you two books that I really enjoyed just they aren't necessarily related to economics, but help me become a better economist anyway. This one, the first one I have is The Science of Storytelling. This is a book about storytelling, but from more of like a neurological, psychological standpoint, like why stories work. What are the elements of stories that help keep us engaged? Why do we love stories? It was really interesting. I read a lot of books about telling stories. I tell stories here on YouTube. I tell stories in class. I tell stories when I'm writing my research. And I want to be better at telling those stories. So seeing this way of arguing for what makes a good story really helped me improve my storytelling abilities this year. So if you want to become a better economist in the stories that you tell, or if you're just interested in telling better stories to friends or family or any other acquaintances, I recommend The Science of Storytelling. My final book I don't actually have a hard copy of here, I read them all on Kindle, is The Way of Kings. <laughs> This is a fiction book and it is a beast. It is 1,000 pages. And I have had this book on my Kindle for years, but I've always been afraid to read it because when I look at these fantasy books that are 1,000 pages long, I just know that the author is gonna take me through and describe not just every tree in the forest and not just every leaf in the tree, it's going to tell me the veins on the leaves and I just do not want to read that kind of story. And I was totally wrong about this. The Way of Kings was fascinating, engaging. The ending gave me chills. I enjoy talking to friends who have read these books and I go in and I explain to them, I'm at this part and I can't believe what's going on. I loved it so much that I've now read two more of the books, each 1,000 and 1,200 pages. I'm on the fourth book that's also 1,200 pages. I cannot believe how much of these books I have read this year, but they're just so fun and engaging. The author, Brandon Sanderson, has a pretty good handling on economics and tries to incorporate that in his books. Not in a in-your-face way, but hey, these characters, they face economic incentives or they face economic constraints, and this is how it affects their actions. I really appreciate that in a book. This really has nothing to do with being an economist other than you need to relax sometimes and have something engaging that gets you just in another world, and I have loved The Way of Kings for that. Well, thank goodness, I have to give away one copy of each of these books, but I don't have to give away a whole set. <sighs> well, that was unfortunate. I guess now I'm giving away not just each one of these books to six different people, but I will give the entire set to one of you. To find out how to enter, go ahead and check in the description below. And if you're interested in that review of mine, I recommend you check out this video right here.